morning. Morning. I'm going to uh, finish a study I've been doing here up in the rainforest about uh, post tribulation versus the pre tribulation belief. And today we're going to be going to the book of Ezekiel. Uh, sorry, Isaiah 13, 6 first, and then to Ezekiel 30. Fine, grab me. <laughs> okay, we ended yesterday. Uh, uh, if you're uh, if you're a pre-trip believer, you're looking up, looking forward to the appearing of Jesus Christ. And if you're a post-trib, you're looking forward to the appearing of the Antichrist. Because you want to see him standing up in the temple in the abomination. So, if you're not believing in a pre-tribulation rapture yet, after all the scriptures I gave you, which shows you the gathering away, the gathering up of the saints, and uh, if you don't believe that yet, and you're still unbelieving, these next verses are for you. Starting... Uh, in uh, Amos 5.18, when God says, Woe, you better listen. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So in Isaiah 13.6, if you've already turned there, Isaiah 13.6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Then we go over to Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 30 and verse 3. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be as the time it shall be the time of the heathen. Now if we go back into Joel, let me just go over to Joel here. To Joel 2.1. 2.1. You have lots of time to, uh, to stop, stop the video and check it. Joel 2.1. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, and for he is strong that executeth the word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide in it? Who can abide in it? So you think you can go through this post-tribulation belief and abide in it? Boy. Amos 5.20 Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness is in it? Are we not the light of the world? Jesus Christ, the light of the world? Are we not part of his body? Are we not the light? Here, in the book of Amos, it says there's no brightness in it. So if there's lights, they're awfully dim. Yeah. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh at us as a thief in the night. Now, if you're waiting for this abomination of desolation to appear in the temple, this, this Antichrist to stand and appear in the temple first, why is Jesus here saying that it so cometh as a thief in the night? He's coming to gather you up. To gather you up like like a thief in the night. The graves are going to suddenly be open. Bam! Poof. The bodies are going to be going up to be with Jesus first. We're going to look at that again in a little bit. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Luke 6, 25. Let's look at another woe God gave us here. Luke 6, 25. You want to believe all scripture, you know, in the order that it's written, it's for you and you're just to take all of it for yourself and not be dispensational and not rightfully divide it, that everything is for you. Why aren't you still doing animal sacrifices? Why don't you quit with the animal sacrifices? Jesus said in the cross is finished, right? Okay, then we've got to rightfully describe this, the, the scripture, divide the scriptures and see what's for the Gentiles and what's for the Jews. We're barely saved as Gentiles. We're only grafted in, we're barely saved, scarcely saved. Luke 6, 25, Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Are you full? Are you filling yourself up? Are you getting ready for this seven years, preparing to endure to the end? Are you full? Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. 
Now let's zip over to Revelation 11:12. I'm going to show you something in the book of Revelation here. Revelation 11:12. Revelation 11, 12. And we're going to stay in Revolution, Revelation for a while. <coughs> we'll go to 13, 6 next. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Would that not be the trump of God? Come up hither. His voice. We only hear it. Secret rapture. Ooh. And their enemies beheld them. Wow. Friends, if you believe in a post-trib doctrine, and you're not gathered together in the clouds, because you don't believe every word of God is pure, you don't believe every word of His book, and take it by inspiration, and rightfully divide it. When Jesus returns in the clouds, you will take the mark of the beast. You will take the mark of the beast and hit the lake of fire. Revelation 13, 6, are you not part of all? Do you see that word all in Revelation 13, 6? You think you're not part of all? You will take the mark of the beast if you're here for the first three and a half years of Jacob's struggle. But there's, according to the scripture, this thing lasts seven years long. There's no, no taking, gathering up in between. This thing lasts seven years long. So if you're here for that seven years, you will take the mark of the beast. Quit lying to yourself. Lying is lying. Quit lying to yourself. You know what? You know, if you don't provide for your family, the scripture says you're worse than an infidel. How are you going to provide for your family if you don't take for that mark? Are you going to be worse than an infidel? Or are you going to take the mark and provide for your family? Are you going to give in when you want your wife be raped, your daughter be raped, your sons be raped, your kids killed in front of you, tortured, bones smashed and broken? So according to God, it is a salvation issue. It is, my friends. All the post-trippers say it is. At least all the ones I see on YouTube say it's a salvation issue. A lot of post-trippers won't even make a statement of faith. Won't even make a statement of faith. Oh, we believe in the... Are, are, you ashamed of, are you ashamed of Jesus Christ? Are you ashamed of his words? Why don't you make a statement of faith? And just show everyone what you believe. Quit beating around the bush. What are you beating? That's like lying if you're beating around the bush. Make a statement of faith here. Where in the scripture does it say? Someone told me where in the scripture does it say I have to make a statement of faith. If you don't make a statement of faith, how do you know what other people, how do you expect other people to know what you believe to, to, to follow your teachings? If you don't even want to write your teachings down or just change them, whatever pleases you, or not mention them if somebody in your congregation doesn't like it, that's lying. Stop it. Revelation 13, 16. Let's just read this really carefully together. And he causeth all, this is the Antichrist, right? Both small and great, causeth all. You see that word all? All, are you not part of all if you're here during the time of Jacob's trouble? The, the, the post-tribulation uh, post time, whatever you want to call it, time of Jacob's trouble. He causes all, the only ones that'll escape that is the ones with the mark in the forehead. That's 144,000 only. Both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. You will take the mark to provide for your family. Listen to this. 1 Timothy 5.8 But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house. You hear that? For your own, and especially those of your own house. Who's your own? Your brothers and sisters in Christ. you got to be able to store enough to provide for them too. Are you ready? For this to go through this post trip, are you really you really believe it? Especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. Are you denying the faith? Believe in Jesus by faith. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Your faith in him? Are you denying the faith? And it's worse than an infidel. Let's just read that together again. Verse 8 of Timothy 5. But if any provide not for his own and specifically for those, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Now, I'm going to give you another verse on the pre-tribulation, pre-tribulation, revelation, the pre-gathering up belief, the pre-trib, which is 
the truth. And all the new Bible versions change this verse. I wonder why they do that. And uh, this is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. Make sure you got a King James Bible by you when you read this. And then check your Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Because if your Bible changed it, you're already in trouble. It's no wonder why you're being misled. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump, trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, verse 17, then we, we, with, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we're going to meet the Lord in the air and ever be with the Lord. So where's this soul, soul sleep thing? I heard all these, you hear all these people, especially from the Church of Christ, talking about soul sleep for a thousand years. Where's this nonsense come from? Oh, not in the scriptures. Sorry. Show me the verse, chapter and verse. Show it to me. Now the new versions, which are new gods, we go back to the book of Judges, back to Deuteronomy. We found out about the new gods they chose. Hmm. Everybody's choosing a new Bible version today, new gods. If you don't got the King James in English, you're in a lot of trouble. Change this trump of God. You know the trump back here? Uh, where is this? Uh, from rent with a shout voice and the trump of God. They changed the trump of God for a trumpet shall sound. A trumpet shall, it's not a trumpet. It's not one of the trumpets of judgment. It's the trump of God. It's God's voice. Why do they do that? Why do they change trump to trumpet? Why do the new Bible versions do that? They want to convince you that everyone will hear it. Everyone won't hear it. Only true Bible believers are here. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's not about baptism. It's not about, about, about going to a church and, and, and tithing and, 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 and all these things that, that modern churches are getting you to do. Not about going to, there's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. Believe in him and thou shalt be saved. Repent and believe the gospel. So 1 Corinthians 15, 52 in the King James Bible, of course. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So here we have it again. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. We have it again. Confirmation scripture. <clears throat> now Exodus 19, 18 to 20. Let me show you something about that trump. Exodus 19, 18 to 20. 18. And Mount Sinai was all together on smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as a smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. And then the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder. Moses spake and God answered with a voice. So I think this, this long waxing louder and louder would be like the trump of God if somebody else could hear it. But when Moses spake, God answers him by a voice. So let's just look at... Uh, Verse 20, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Now, if you see, if you see a, a movie and, and all the children of Israel below the mountain, and they hear this sound, and God calls Moses, Moses goes up. Well, how do we know Moses just didn't ascend up? How could he get up that quickly to speak to the Lord? You gotta go all the way up. That's a huge mountain. The real Mount Sinai in Arabia is a huge mountain. And he's at the bottom of the children. He, God called him up and he went up. Almost like another rapture. Sort of rapture? Hmm. Interesting. Now God warns us in the scripture not to let any man take thy crown. And there's a lot of men trying to steal our crowns today. And what is that crown for? The crown is for patiently waiting and looking up. We'll be looking up. We're not to be looking to Israel uh, to see who's going to show up in the temple of desolation. This, the, the, show, the Antichrist is short. We're not to be watching for the Antichrist. We're to be looking up, watching for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You want to hear the trump of God? You better start looking up and believing, preaching. Better start believing it, guys. Let's just look at Revelation 3, 10 to 12. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hmm. God never has, and God never will put anyone through his wrath. He's not going to slay the righteous with the wicked. God never has and never will slay the righteous with the wicked. Genesis 18.25, let's just look. That it be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? When so which God do you serve? Believing he put his own body through this wrath and slay the righteous with the wicked. Which God do you serve? Because the righteous are going to be slain. If there's anyone left who didn't believe in the pre-trib, that put themselves in the post-trib, for whatever reason, you're going to end up getting your head cut off. You're going to be slain, right? You're going to be slain with the wicked. And in those all those first things we talked about in this study, you're going to be slain with the wicked. God doesn't slay the righteous with the wicked. That means you weren't righteous yet. Because you're probably on your own works thinking you're going to heaven. You're probably self-righteous. So you're not righteous, you're self-righteous. He said, it is finished. It is finished on the cross. What are you doing being self-righteous? If you don't think it's finished and you must endure to the end to make it through, you must endure to the end to make it through? I believe you're serving another God. I believe you're serving another God you fashioned in your own heart. A God that must be received by works and self-righteousness. God pulled Noah and his family from judgment. God pulled Lot and his family from judgment. Yeah, his wife turned around, she turned into pillar salt. He still pulled them from judgment. When the judgment was coming, right? Pulled them out first. Now you must trust him that he'll pull you out of this time of Jacob's trouble before it happens. You truly believe in him. Time of Jacob's trouble is for the Jews. It's not for us. Not for us Gentile Bible believers. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and are, and are saved. Not are being saved. And are saved. If you're just being saved, it's for you. You better check what your Bible says. <clears throat> you know, there's at least seven raptures in the Bible. The first was uh, Enoch. He was taken up even before death. Uh, the second was Elijah. who was also taken up even before death. That doesn't mean that Enoch and Elijah are the two witnesses. No, 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 no. Moses has to be one of the witnesses. Because Moses turned the water to blood. Elijah dried up the water for, for, for years. Moses turned the water to blood. Those, are, those I believe, are the two witnesses. Then you have uh, Noah. Then you have Noah and his family were pulled out before the wrath of God. Then you have uh, Jesus himself who ascended up to heaven before Mary could touch him, Mary Magdalene could touch him. Then when Jesus uh, descended back to the earth and uh, he was around for 40 days and had over 500 witnesses, more than 500 witnesses, uh, during that time as soon as he came down, the graves opened, the graves opened, all the saints came out of the graves. Of course, all the saints that were down in uh, in uh, Abraham's bosom, they were taken up and given their bodies back. And they walked around for 40 days, another rapture before they ascended up to heaven. Uh, you're going to have the catching away of the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ has to be taken up. God's not going to put his bride through wrath. Why would God put his, that's his, his bride? It's his love. Why would he put his bride through his own wrath? He's not going to do that. Will you guys wake up? Then, for those of you that do want to believe in this post-trib rapture and go through it, because you don't believe God's word, you're going to finally be taken up, but you're going to have to lose your heads for it. That is a different gospel. It's a gospel that they, an angel flies through the air proclaiming. And in that gospel, it's not just believing, it's also works, belief in works. We don't have that today. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and by faith, by faith and trusting in Him. So we get to heaven. So, 
don't know why anyone here wants to still believe in the post-trib rapture after this, but if you do, I suggest you watch this, this study again. It would be very good for you. And I sure hope that you change your mind. Sure hope you change your mind and get yourself converted. Because I think you're serving another God. Thanks, guys. into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.